Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the program. Today, we are going to work on Ladybird, and it's going to be selection related. So let me show you a problem that we've had for a long, long time. So if I select some text here on a web page, uh, and then I resize the browser window, then the selection disappears. And that is actually due to a long standing architectural problem that we have. So uh, what's happening is that when I resize the window, then we invalidate the page layout because, um, you know, as the width of the viewport changes, there's a different amount of space available for text. So we have to relay out the page. Um, and the way that the selection works is that selection is defined as like um, a start and an end point within the layout tree. So if we look at the initial containing block, which is sort of the, the root and the layout node, uh, the root of the layout tree is always an initial containing block. Actually, I can dump the layout tree here so you can see it. We can see that at the top, I would have expected us to see the top at least as my um, do I, am I capping the number of <laughs> scroll back lines? Let's change that a little bit. All right, there we go. And uh, let's dump again. Yeah, so the initial containing block is the root of the layout tree. And it has this thing we call a layout range uh, M selection. And a layout range is um, essentially a start position and an end position within the layout tree. So when you are selecting text, uh, we figure out where in the layout tree uh, you click down with the mouse and also where you uh, let go after moving around like this. And that makes up the selection. But uh, uh, this architecture is actually um, causing us a problem on one hand, which is that when we invalidate the layout tree, we lose this information because um, by invalidate, I mean, we just throw the whole thing away and, and start over. So we lose all this stuff that we've saved. Um, so that's no bueno. But we also, um, we also not really required to have this thing in the first place. Because um, there's a DOM selection, which operates on the DOM tree. And if we dump our DOM tree, this is probably going to look more familiar to, to um, Anybody who's like made web pages, the DOM tree is just the, you know, the HTML element, head element, style elements, body, IMG, H1, and so on. Like the DOM tree um, has a selection API. Or rather, well, there's a thing called selection, which is maybe technically its own spec, actually. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's its own spec. Uh, and we have each document, I think, has a selection. And right now, we have both a DOM selection and a layout selection. Um, but we I don't think we need the layout selection, at least the last time we were discussing this um, in the browser channel on Discord, we kind of discovered that I had added the layout tree based selection um, because I had a wrong understanding of how selection needs to work. So I had understood that selection is supposed to be able to select um, pseudo elements. So essentially, elements that don't have a corresponding DOM node, but are generated by like a pseudo element CSS selector. Um, let me show you what I mean by that. So I'll make a foo HTML here. Let me just slap together something quickly. Um, We'll put something after this thing, and we will put some text in there. Friends. Um, hello. I hope I'm doing this right because <laughs> um, let's see. OK, so hello, friends, right? But as you can see here in Firefox, um, other browsers don't actually let you select pseudo element content. You're, you're limited to uh, this part, this part of the DOM, and this stuff that's generated by CSS, it's not selectable. So that's kind of interesting. 
uh, I had added the, the layout range based selection thing, thinking that, well, we need to support stuff that's not in the DOM. Um, so our thing, we currently support doing this, but that's not how other browsers behave. And um, while it is a nifty feature or whatever, we should behave the same as other browsers do. Otherwise, we are going to be incompatible and it's going to lead to um, sites breaking. So we have to conform. But um, while we lose this nifty feature, at least I think it's kind of nifty, um, it means that we gain architecturally because we can actually just get rid of this thing. And this whole concept of a layout range is no longer necessary if we just port or, or convert this code to operate on the DOM selection instead. So uh, that is what we're going to do today. And um, by converting it to use the DOM selection, uh, it should then um, stop disappearing uh, when I resize the viewport or, or relay out the page, because uh, while the layout tree gets invalidated and, and thrown out, uh, we still keep the same DOM. So the DOM remains the same. And if the selection is just um, two boundary points in the DOM, it should not be affected by um, by the layout changing. Okay, so hopefully you understand uh, the situation. And let's go ahead and do something about it. So I guess we start by just, we're just going to get rid of this. And we have some API here that gets the layout range. Um, I think we can just make that thing return the DOM selection instead. So let's do that. Also, maybe I shouldn't call it the DOM selection. That's just how I think of it in my head because it's a, well, DOM selection is probably the best name for it because it's a selection that operates or describes positions in the DOM rather than in the layout tree. So we're calling it DOM selection. Uh, it's in the selection namespace, which is a little bit awkward, but we name our namespaces after the spec they implement. So the selection object is in the selection spec, so it goes in the selection namespace. So we have a function selection that returns a selection selection. Isn't that nice? OK. And let's see how this thing would operate. Selection return um, document select get select. Um, okay, what is that thing called? Selection, get selection, all right. Oh, it's um, non-const. Hmm. Well, I guess we can, uh, we can have two variants of this API, why don't we? One const and one non-const, although there was no const getter on the um, document. Okay, let me go ahead and const cast here. We don't have to think about this right very now. Get selection. Um, oh, it returns a GZ putter, right, right. So we cannot bend a reference here because you might not have a selection. I think if we are in a document that's not um, attached to a browsing context at the moment, because you've navigated away from it or whatever, there's some some situation where you wouldn't have a selection. So uh, we're going to have to null check these things. That's fine, though. So we'll do this. All right. And we should be good. Okay, and then here, uh, recompute selection states. Right. Hmm. 
And then what do we have? Set selection and set selection end. So these are helpers. I think these are helpers that we use um, when we handle mouse events. So if you do like, if you click once, then we set the selection to like where you click. And if you click and drag, then we first set selection, but then we set selection end whenever you're moving the cursor around. So we're only updating, um, like we keep the, the anchor point of the selection, but we keep um, shifting the um, focus node, whatever it's called. I think it's an anchor and a focus node or anchor and focus point. So these APIs, um, well, they can, we can't really take a layout range because I'm going to delete layout range and I'm going to delete layout position as well. Maybe the solution is just to have whoever's calling these um, call stuff on the DOM selection directly instead. So these are called in four places. All right. So browsing context, select all. Hmm. Select all. Wow, this is kind of uh, involved. How is this implemented? Select all. So we locate the first layout node, and then we find the last layout node, presumably. We find the first piece of text in the layout, and then the last piece of text. Is that it? I don't know. Why is this so complicated? Who wrote this? Did I write this? Um, Tim moved it. I'm pretty sure I wrote it because this looks like something I would write. But, uh, but I don't think it's necessary to do it this way, actually. So what if we just first, uh, first of all, um, let's do this, because I think that's, it's not entirely trivial. Yeah, so let's just cache that so we don't have to do it repeatedly. Um, and then document get selection. Um, I guess we will store that away like this. And then if no selection, then return. Otherwise, I just want to select everything. So select all children. Yeah, there's some API for this select all children of the document. Huh? <laughs> I think that should work. Select all children. Um, bum, bum, bum. So we'll create a new range, set the start at the start of the node. So the document and set the end to the end of the node. So I think, I think that should work. That would be good. Cause then we, <laughs> we can just get rid of all this gunk. Um, vastly simplify one function. Okay. And then we have more things calling these. So these are event handler. And who's calling this fella? Also event handler, only event handler. All right. Well, I guess we have to go and deal with them. So what do we want to do instead of set selection? What I really want to do is like, I guess I want to, f well, I have to get the selection of the document. Um, and if I have a selection, then I want to set it to the DOM node that we're clicking on. So like set, set position. Wait, what does set position do? Set position is the same as collapse. Uh, let's see. Oh, set position is like set. It's sort of like setting the cursor to somewhere, but you clear the selection, I guess, and then you set a new selection that just Hmm. That it doesn't feel like what I want though. Set set base and extent. 
takes an anchor node, anchor offset, focus node, and focus offset. Okay. Uh, what does it do? Makes a new range. And then uh, we set. Uh, yeah, so we're creating a new range and sending the selection to that range. That seems like what I would want. At least that's the kind of the most straightforward thing to do. So set, paste, and extent. Uh, and then let's see, what is this old code doing? So this is just placing the cursor. <laughs> this is all rather strange. Find a better solution. Yeah, well, we are kind of finding a better solution at this moment, but this cursor position here might be able to get rid of that too, but like, let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, let's set base and extent. So the old code is creating a layout range with two positions. So the, this is the start position, this is the end position. So we're only setting the start position. Um, so I think here we can do kind of the same thing. But this thing takes non null pointers, right? So yeah, it takes two non null pointers. So we have to provide a node, but I think setting the cursor or setting the anchor and the focus node to the same exact thing. I think that's the equivalent of what we were doing before where we said like, we set the start to somewhere but the end to nowhere. I think, I think these are equivalent. And I guess I have to star these. All right. And I don't have anywhere to, to propagate errors to, so we're just gonna have to suck it if errors happen. All right, what else do we got? And handle key down. And handle key down, we get the selection and check if it's valid. Okay, so I'm thinking we will redo this to be like this instead, get selection. And then we want to get, oh, here it's already converting to a DOM range. That's interesting. So this piece of code was already made to work with a DOM range. Cool. So I guess that probably simplifies our job. How do we get the um, how do we get the range get range at? Do you have multiple ranges? M range. Index must be zero. Oh yeah, there's some weird thing where like I remember the API of selection makes it sound like there are multiple ranges within the selection, but there's only actually one. That's why it's um, a single pointer here rather than multiple. Get range at, yeah. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a friendly accessor for this um, because this API is kind of awkward to use uh, internally in the engine, right? Because uh, may throw an exception that we don't know how to handle in this case. And it has like kind of this goofy API. And we know that there's only ever one range in the selection anyway. Well, one or zero, I guess. But um, we can do this range. Uh, non standard. This. Um, I mean, yeah, we can just say it's non-standard. Convenience accessor for the selections range. That is what we want. We will add that here. Return M range. Cool. So if we have the range, then hmm. 
I guess really we need to uh, null check that first. So like we can do this if range and yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, maybe I should delete these APIs. Okay, so that I can see all the places where I have to change it. Okay, so what are we talking about here? We are in handle key down. So you're typing something and there is a current, there's currently a selection range. So we want to nuke the selection range in the layout tree. Um, yeah, so we just want to clear the selection really. So how do we clear the selection? I wonder, I guess that would be anything that sets the selection to like null. Remove all ranges. All right, this me method must make this empty by disassociating its range if it has an associated range. Okay, so it seems like remove all ranges is the strat. Uh, also aliased as empty, apparently, which is it's kind of an unfortunately ambiguous name. Like um, using empty as a, na uh, as a verb in API, I feel like that's really, uh, that's really, really slippery because <laughs> uh, I think many people would expect this to be a check for if something is empty and uh, I'm sure mistakes get made around that sometimes. Anyway, uh, so here we can just do a selection, remove all ranges, I guess, will be the equivalent of nuking the selection. Okay, and then we also have to deal with this fella, set selection end. So this is in mouse move. So we have, we're holding the mouse button, I think. Yeah, we are in mouse selection and we are moving the mouse around. And now we want to update where the selection uh, is currently focused, basically. So document selection. Um, set base and extent once again, or well, was there any other API for that? Extend, what does that do? Extend, let's see, this sounds like it would just set, um, if this API would just update where the selection ends, but keep the anchor point. That would be cool. Uh, let me try if that's what it does. Otherwise we have to change it. Sounds like that's might be what it does. Um, hit paintable DOM node. That would be super sweet. Okay, we will we will see immediately if this is not working because the selection will just not work. Um, okay, so docu. Where are we? Double click. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do something like this maybe. just so that we have a pointer to the document going forward here. Um, maybe I'm, no, mm, maybe I should leave that alone. How do people get to the document in this function? Oh, no document. Okay, I guess that's fine, whatever. So set selection would be, that's the thing that sets both the anchor and the focus. So we can just do, um, does a double click, I guess, to select a full word, set base and extent, 
paintable DOM node first word break before and paintable DOM node first word break after. Boom. Okay, did we? Okay, we got everything in this file that is looking promising. Uh, okay, well, not so fast. <laughs> Uh, event handler 705. Set but not used. Oh, that's cool. We can get rid of that. Very nice. And then in browsing context, CPP, we had, oh, I did not, did not finish in this file, I guess. Wait, what was the one I edited here? Select all. Right, right, right. And this is selected text. Um, I think we can do that very easily with the DOM range as well, actually. So let's see. Uh, return. OK. And then gets, uh, oh. Document, come on now. Here we go. And then if selection range, well, let's just store it like this. But if we have a range, I think to get the selected text, we just have to like turn the range into a string which I can only do if I actually include range. Hey, and then we can delete all of this too, I think. All of this goofy logic for walking the layout tree and capturing the selected text. Because range already knows how to get this, that um, text between two points. Wow, <laughs> this is getting a lot simpler. Um, which I'm very, very happy about because this code was perhaps not the most simple. Hmm. Okay. Is that everything in that file? Looks like it might have been. Initial containing block. Okay, so we have to nuke these functions because I deleted them. Sure. Oh, by the way, Previously, after we were set or when we were setting the selection or the selection end, we would also call recompute selection states. So I think that's something that we're going to have to take care of now. Um, recompute selection states. Yeah. So what this function does is that it basically goes through the layout tree and finds for anything that is. Um, like any part of the layout tree that's part of the selection, it marks those nodes as like, this node is part of the selection. And that causes us to render them differently. So that's what makes us uh, render them with the selection background. And I think there are even some CSS selectors for this stuff that we could use in the future. But yeah, the, the reason that it's actually brown behind the text here is because these layout nodes are marked with, um, they have a selection state that informs the painting logic that it needs to paint the selection color behind the text and paint the text in a selected color. So this was previously done by set selection. So we need to do this um, I'm thinking that probably the easiest way to solve this is to just have selection do it. So like M range, like whenever we're setting the range to something, we could just, um, we could do something about it. So like if auto, 
Layout root is document layout node. I have to include that. This is not actually not super beautiful. Um, recompute selection states. Yeah, it's not super beautiful because we're going to have to do this in many places. There might be a better way to do this, but I think for now, it's probably okay. I'm just going to do it anywhere after we set M range to anything, basically. Wow. Well, all right. So if we do that, still doesn't quite build. So where are we failing? We are failing in initial containing block. Oh yeah, right, right, because it's trying to get this selection, which is not a thing anymore. So what we need to do here instead is get the documents selection. Um, so I guess um, I mean, what we really want is the selection range. Hmm. Range or null like that. Okay. And then if there's no range, then nothing is selected. And then, yeah, so this, what this does is that it walks the entire layout tree and checks for each layout tree, like, are you part of the selection? Or are you, um, are you the position where the selection starts, where it ends? Or um, does it both start and end within the same node? Uh, or are you just somewhere in between the start and end nodes? So there are four states, actually start and start and end and full and none <laughs> yeah they're described here selection states so yeah so this is like if if we imagine that starts here is a layout node uh, if i select tart in the middle then we are start and end because we start and end within the same layout node um, if uh, this were the selection then starts is in state full because um, the whole node is selected, um, and it doesn't start in this node. It starts here and ends here. Um, and so um, if I do this, then starts is in the end state. If I do this, ends is in the end state, which means that the selection ends in this node. And as you can imagine, start means that selection starts in the selection node here. No selection just means that there's no selection affecting this node. And again, this is related to how we paint. <sighs> so we have to get this to look at DOM instead, at the DOOM. Um, so I guess we can just get the DOM node here. So like DOM node is layout no day dot DOM no day. All right, and then we check that if we have a DOM node and DOM node is equal to the range, I have to include something for that. Range start container. Yes, that's the one I want. And if the DOM node is equal to the um, ranges end container, then we are start and end. Um, selection. Otherwise, if we have a DOM node and the DOM node is the same as the selections or the ranges um, start container, then it's a start. Okay, we have a DOM node and the DOM node is range end container, then that's an end state node. Otherwise, it's either a full or a none. 
right. And then we set the layout state. Okay. Line box fragment. Uh, it would be so sweet if this just works. <laughs> Let's see. So what does this code want to do? Selection wrecked. Okay, so this code um, is responsible for calculating the rectangle that needs to be filled behind a, a fragment of text or a fragment of a fragment of something that we've placed in a line box, basically. Um, line boxes are these things uh, that we lay out one under the other in, in line content. So uh, on serenityos.org, we can actually turn on line box borders and you can see the green here. All these green borders are borders around uh, line boxes. So like this is one line box, this is one line box, this is one line box. And um, the way that we break it up is that um, every word is one line box, but if, if uh, we do an optimization where we merge uh, words that have identical style. So unless you have like one regular word, one bold word, one italic word, um, then we have to keep them separated so we can style them differently. But if if you have like consecutive words, each with the same style, then we just merge those into one long line box fragment. But um, yeah, so a, a line box fragment is just one unit here. So on this line right here, we can see that the Discord server link is one fragment, and then you can see that there's a green border here where the second fragment starts, so the red text. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so we are calculating the selection rect for one line box fragment here. So if there is no selection, we're in selection state none, there's no rect, easy enough. Uh, if selection state is full, then we just return the absolute rect of the line box fragment, so the whole freaking thing. Uh, otherwise, we need to get the um, selection from the document, I guess. So let's see. Also, why isn't this check first? If it's not a text node, then screw it. Only, I guess, I guess the stuff that comes up here is that um, it's not none and it's not full, so it means it's a partial selection. And there are three types of partial selection. Either you have the start and end within the same uh, layout node. So let's imagine that text here is the layout node or the uh, line box fragment that we're looking at. So if the selection is EX, then we are a start and end. So it's a partial selection um, contained within the line box fragment. But maybe you only start, maybe you only start in it, but continue to um, to some other node, like like if the selection looks like that, right? So then this is a start node, which means that we only start doing the selection rect under the X, or it's an end node, like node uh, would be here. So the selection ends here, which means that the N and O need the selection rect, but not the D and E. So th those rects are what we are calculating here. Um, so I guess we need to get the I need to get the range again. So range is um, I mean if we don't have a range, that means that we can also just return like that, right? <clears throat> because if there's no selection range, then there's no rect to paint. So the rect is empty. And end index in node would correspond to range and offset, I think, or something like that. Uh, I should probably update the date here. Was it not end offset? End offset, it is end offset. I can't compare because Start index is assigned. Okay. And end index is also. Why are these signed? That's so weird. We would never have. Um, 
yeah, that's totally bogus. They, we shouldn't have assigned indexes into um, into a text node because you can't have a negative index into a text node. And you also cannot have a uh, negative length in that node either. So that's really confusing. Let's fix that up right away. I wonder if that breaks a bunch of stuff, though. That would be annoying. Do you have a bunch of int APIs? Please tell me you don't. Ugh. Ugh. All right. All right. That's a yak shave for another day. Um, I'm not going to touch that right now because that's going to that's gonna spread out and force me to fix a bunch of stuff. So let's just cast these and put a fix me. So we'll do this and fix me uh, m start and m length should be unsigned. And then we won't need these casts. OK. And then selection start index in node becomes range start offset. Yes. Selection start index in node, range start offset. Selection end index in node, range end offset. Boom. All right. Uh, and then it's more of the stuff. Start index in node, range start offset, end offset, sure. Yeah, so we're just converting the nomenclature basically using the DOM range API instead. Okay. Um, Okay, that's it. All right, will it link? Will it build? It builds, all right. Will it render selections? It does. Oh, um, but it's not. <laughs> Not behaving just right because I select here and it just starts from the start of the document. All right, so that's bogus. I think because I um, I try to use that extend API that I didn't understand what it did. Extend, yeah. So that's probably not right. And this is mouse move. So maybe we can just do something like this. Um, so if we have a selection range, <clears throat> set base and extent, I think, yeah. And if we don't have, we should always have in this case, but if for whatever reason we don't, I mean, I guess you could programmatically, like a JavaScript could run and mess up the selection while I'm selecting with my mouse. There might be other considerations if that happens, but if that happens for whatever reason, um, let's just reset as if you did a cursor positioning single click selection like that by just setting the start and um, the, the anchor and focus to the same thing. Hey! <laughs> Okay, I think we got it right. That's so cool. Uh, okay, it doesn't behave in perfectly right. Like if I select backwards, then it doesn't work correctly. So I think we need to normalize the selection somewhere um, when I'm moving backwards like that. Yeah, we need to normalize something somewhere um, so that we can move in either direction. Let's see. So what is it that's going wrong? We're doing a set base and extent. Um, 
there were normalized in the there were normalized calls in various places, right? Yeah. So um, I'm getting the select text. Or is it this thing that's the drag thing? Maybe that's what I was doing wrong. So set base and extent. Hmm. I guess they should be swapped if I'm going in the other direction. What does set position do? Collapse, right? Um, how do I know which direction is which? Because, yeah, because this works when we're selecting forward. So if I'm selecting from left to right, everything is all dandy. But the moment I go right to left, start to screw up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so isn't there some API for that? What does collapse do? Base and extent. Is there a set range? No. Okay, I'm kind of curious just to test out this set position thing to see what it does. Oh, well, that's definitely not what I wanted. All right. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. Any of the things I want. Um, all right. So set base and extent. I'm just going to have to flip them over. Or maybe I can um, create a range and then normalize the range. What is going on here? Position of boundary point relative to other boundary point. So if anchor is before focus, set the, set the start, the new ranges start to anchor. What? Is that what it says in the spec? Um, let's see. was it step five if anchor is before focus set the start the new ranges start to anchor all right otherwise set the start them to focus and anchor respectively okay set the start sure So why doesn't it just move uh, the thing in the direction that I want? Start container. So let me just double check here. If I use end container, oh, maybe I, sh I should be using something else entirely, like selection. Container. Yeah, I should be using the anchor node here. I shouldn't be looking at the underlying range, but rather I should be asking the selection, what's your anchor? And manipulate the, the non-anchor. That's what I should be doing. Set base and extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah because the, the range uh, doesn't know which part of the selection is which. So then we can do that. And is anchor node guaranteed to be non-null? It's not. So I do need to have that. Okay. Yeah, that was a little confusing, but we are making it work. All right. I think this is going to work. <laughs> yep. 
yeah, we definitely want selection to work in all directions. And yeah, now I can go right to left and left to right. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, excellent. And and it still breaks on resize. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, okay. Why does it break on resize? Selection is in the DOM, so it should still be there. But I guess after a, well, if we invalidate the layout, we relay out the page, then we never run um, the selection state thingy. So what if I do that and then, can I like, I want to trigger a selection state update somehow. No. But I mean, I can probably just do it in update layout. If I get, um, like after we perform a layout, we can go ahead and do a, um, uh, we just need to tell the layout tree. So layout root recompute selection states. That's the thing I wanted to do. So if we do that after layout, I think that should just make the same selection show up again. Ah, uh? <laughs> nice. All right, it freaking works. That is so awesome. Um, so I think I think we don't use layout range for anything anymore. It's only used in layout position. And layout position is uh, included in a handful of places, but it's not actually used. So let's do commits here. And then we can also get rid of layout position and layout range. So um, let's see. I guess I'm just thinking which order should we do these things? Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so let's add the accessor first. The selection range accessor. So the web add convenient selection range accessor. This is a lot smoother than calling the throwsy um, get range at API, especially uh, since we know there is only ever one or zero zero or one range. Uh, zero or one ranges, I guess would be grammatically correct, even though it feels weird. Zero or one, or is it zero or one ranges or zero or one range? Ranges sounds better. Zero or one ranges attached. Um, at most one range in the selection. All right. Comment below if you think zero or one range or zero or one ranges sounds better. I'd love to hear from some native English speakers about that. Anyway, uh, then let's see. I guess we can do the um, rewriting. Uh, or no, we, we're going to have to take all of this gunk in one go, I think, because it's all interdependent because like we can't access or accessing the DOM selection is useless unless we actually set it to something. And um, only now do we start to actually update the DOM selection in response to user interactive selection events. So I think this all comes along here, libweb. Mm, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. 
Lib web. I kind of I kind of want to split it up anyway because this is a still still a bit messy. Stage. Let me split it up so that we get the browsing context functions separately here. Like select uh, text and select all children, right? Lib web make browsing context selected text. Um, implement in terms of selection. Instead of sifting through the layout tree to extract the selected text, just ask the current dot selection for it. Yeah, that is pretty nice. That is pretty nice change. And likewise with the select all, we can just call that helper API there. So um, implement browsing context select all in terms of selection. Yes. OK. We should test that this builds on Serenity as well, of course, so that we can also make sure that select all actually works. Uh, and select te te selected text. So now, the web. Mm -hmm. uh, make um, da -da -da. Uh, da -da -da. update or uh, replace the uh, layout tree. Use. DOM selection instead of ad hoc layout tree selection. Before this patch, uh, we were expressing the current selection as a uh, range between two points in the layout tree. This was a made-up um, concept I called um, layout range to x uh, layout position. And as it turns out, we don't actually need it. Instead, we can just use the selection API from the selection API spec. Uh, this is um, this API um, expresses selection in terms of the DOM, and um, we already have all the building blocks implemented. So we already had all the building blocks implemented. Yes, that is pretty nice. And then uh, let's see how this runs on Serenity just to make sure. But yeah, then we're going to try to just get rid of layout range and layout position if we don't need them anymore. OK, so selection. Cool. Can I select all? Select all. Select all doesn't work. Mm, suspicious. Can I copy? Copy does work. All right. So goal. Goal. But select all. Mm -mm -mm. OK, so select all was optimistic. Yeah, pressing select all nukes the selection. Um, hmm. So we still have to figure out how that thing should work. Get selection, select all children. OK. 
Okay. So we're not doing this. We are assigning something to the selection. Uh, we're setting the start and the end of the selection, and then we're recomputing the selection states. So I guess here, select all children, and then let me print out the start and end state here. Start container, start offset, end container, m range, end offset. Hmm. Also, why don't we have select all in the um, cute GUI for Ladybird? We should hook that up. Okay, so it's definitely not working. Uh, okay, I didn't do that right. Uh, I should have done debug description like that. Hmm. Okay, and um, hmm. <laughs> so I guess let's add a, a UI for it to the um, to the Qt browser GUI just so we can test it. How is this triggered, by the way? Select all. Who's calling that? Select all. Um, browsing context. Who's calling you? You are called by this API. Connection from client. Select all. OK, so we can maybe hook that up. Um, ladybird uh, window, browser window. That's good. So where's the edit? Do we have a menu here? Menu. File, quick view, quit view, blah, blah, blah. OK, let's just make a quick edit menu for this program. I'm not even going to fix the syntax highlighting right now. Let's, let's just whap it together. Select all, and you go in the edit menu, browser window, select all, sure. And we should probably have control A for that. There's like a, There's like a way to say the standard action shortcuts. Standard shortcut. Um, what is the thing for that? Standard key, right. Let me see if I can get that. Ah, da, da, da. cute standard keys. So select all is probably a thing. Yeah, key sequence select all. So I'm just going to use that to pick up the platform's default um, key bind. Da, da, da. Okay, and then browser window needs a select all slot. <laughs> and can I get the current tab? How do I? 
How do I select all in the tab? Oh, I do dot view dot. Let's. Uh, can we add an API for that? Da, da, da. Void select all. Okay. Okay, well we're we're gonna we're gonna get it. And I forget the who I'm supposed to call. Just client select all. Is that it? Async select all. There we go. Okay, so now I have select all here and it does indeed break the selection. Select all children tries to select in the document from zero to two, which I think would match our DOM. If we look at the DOM inspector here, we'll see the document has two children. So it starts, I guess, in the document and ends in this node. Hmm. I wonder if that's implemented right. Select all children. Hmm. Child count. Right, so given the child count is two, that means that we should be selecting past the end of it, I think. So if we select all, now I wanted to copy the text as well, <laughs> which I don't have API for that either. Um, copy the text. All right, fine, let's get selected. Let's add an API for getting the selected text. Uh, oh, interesting, get selected text is a synchronous API. I guess that's fair. You're doing kind of a synchronous action. We can maybe let that be synchronous for now. It might be better as an async API, but um, it would definitely be better. But since it's available as a sync API, let's just do it. Maybe even like that. Can we do it like that? Maybe that's not good enough. Fine, whatever. Selected text, okay. And here, copy selected text. What do we do? How do we copy something with Qt? Qt set clipboard text. Uh, set text. Okay. How do I access the clipboard? QGUI application clipboard. All right. QGUI application clip. Uh, clipboard and then clipboard set text to Q string from act deprecated string text. Okay. Well, we are gaining some more APIs here. That would be nice. Or uh, not APIs, some functionality. So select all and maybe copy should probably be above that. Sure, copy, copy, all right, QGUI application, update the date, <laughs> wow, 
wow, it's so awkward to do this without syntax highlighting hooked up. I just didn't set it up on this new computer yet um, for, for ladybird cute parts. All right, there we go. So here we are, copy, paste. Hey, that works. That's awesome. Okay, so what if I select everything and copy? I need my text editor here. Wait, what? Oh my goodness, it is. Are you seriously copying out from the, um, <laughs> are you copying out from the style sheet? Um, that's kind of funny. It's copying the style sheet contents as well. I was not expecting that to happen. Interesting. Is that happening here? I wonder. Get selection. And then we were doing a select. Wait, what was it called? Select all children? It's not a function. Oh, S, oh shoot, I, I didn't do that right. There we go. Select all children of document. Okay, and then what happens? S, get range at zero. So the range looks the same as it does for us, right? So it's um, start container document and container document offsets are zero and two. So it's set up the same way ours is. Um, okay, and then what if can we two string that thing? And oh, shoot, that also will also contain that text. And we don't want to include, obviously, we don't want to include that here. Hmm. That's annoying. Okay. I did not realize that this was going to pick up the um, stuff in the style sheet, but that makes sense because that's in the DOM. We don't want that to happen. So I guess really what we want is like um, a different serialization function that skips over things that are not rendered or not visible in the document. So like, basically, we're using range to deprecate a string. Um, not this thing, whatever that is, Unicode range. So this thing is in the spec. And we need to do this, but we need to skip over things that are non visible. So I think we can copy this out and make our own little um, make our own little variant of it. So browsing context, select all children, selected text needs to be different, right? So maybe we will even factor this into a separate function here. Um, visible text and range. Okay. This is an adaptation of range to deprecated string, range um, stringification. We skip over um, DOM nodes that aren't in the layout, that don't have a corresponding layout tree node. Uh, right. So here we'll just say like range in front of all these things. This is DOM text. Probably have to do that in a bunch of places. Uh, 
Okay, just adding range dot in a fajillion places. Just a second here. Um, okay, almost there. And now, wait, range contains now. It's a private member. Well, you, my friend, you're going to get the honor of becoming public API today. Thank you for your service. All right. So um, now that we do this, before we append, we're also going to check and range start container layout node it just has to have one. Okay, node, layout node, and range and container layout node. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. So this is if it's I, the same start and end. So we're going to special case here also. So if range start container, um, if it doesn't have a layout node, then just return empty null string, whatever. Let's be modern and return an empty string, maybe. Actually, let's do that in all these cases here, because it's much easier to deal with empty strings. All right, let's see if this works better. This is a bit janky, I have to admit, but but um, probably we can find some better factoring for it somehow. Selected text, um, visible text in range, range. All right. I'm optimistic about this. In the meantime, let's go ahead and make commits out of those ladybird changes. So adding the copy selected text and select all um, actions. Add um, copy and select all actions to the edit menu. Cool. Okay, so select all still doesn't work. I mean, it still doesn't visually work. If I copy and paste, I at least I don't get the, um, I don't see the um, CSS. So that's good. That means that this is working right, right enough at least. So that's very good. Um, why doesn't it visually show up? We'll look into that momentarily, but um, first, let's just go ahead and fix the selected text changes. Text, let's rebase that so that it's part of the right commit. Okay, so selected text, now good. Um, actually, let's reword the commit because it said that we use the DOM selection for it. Um, like add the DOM selection instead. Note that um, we can't just stringify the DOM range as that would include non-visible things like the content of style elements, etc. So we um, da, 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 run it through an ad hoc variant of the range stringification algorithm. This can probably be factored better, but it's a start. Yes, okay. And then 
why does the selection not visually show up? So we know now by the fact that we can actually um, the control A, control C, right? We are selecting the thing that we want to select by doing that. At least let me double check that actually. Love, control A, control C, paste. Yeah, yeah, so the selection is working. Select all is working, it's just not visually showing up. So maybe the recompute selection states is not going right. Select all children, presumably ends up here. We recompute selection states for each an inclusive subtree. So are we not visiting all of these things? Selection state none. Hmm. I guess let's, let's just print out. Um, I wonder what's the first node that we look at. Recompute selection states. Dom node. Like, where do we go first? Because we should be going to the, the document. And if we look at the document first, then we should notice that it is the selection start point and the endpoint and we should start saying that the selection starts here okay wait hold on let me clear and start over so we start at the document okay and it is the start container and the end container so we should be in start and end um we should be in start and end Okay, let me just log these state transitions as they happen here, just to we can understand what's going wrong. Full none. All right. Uh, wait, what? Oh, are we here? No range? No range, bruh. We don't have a range. Oh, shoot. How's that happening? Selection range. Wait, select all children. We're setting the range to new range. Who's getting rid of the range then? Say what? <laughs> um, do we not have a selection or not a range? Let me log that. So. Let's see what they say. It's a little confusing. We have a selection, but not a range. Okay, at this part, it's fine. But what if I select all? Then we have a selection and we have a range. So we start at the document node. Let's start and end. We enter into the HTML child and then we say none. Hmm. Oh, I think we're doing this wrong here. So basically, when we say start and end here, we uh, are assuming that this is a text selection. So it's like a start and end within a piece of text. But in the document case, it's like two children of the document, the doc type and the HTML element. So um, start and end doesn't mean that we should like transition to none after processing that one.
Wait, so what are we supposed to do then? So we shouldn't do start and end. Um, I mean, the selection does start and end in a way in document, but only if it is, no, it does start and end in a document, but it shouldn't transition to none unless this start and end node was a text node. So state equals selection state start and end. Um, and DOM node is Let's see, does that make sense? Is DOM text? Then we'll go to full. Um, or, or sorry, if it's not um, text, Hmm. Okay, we're getting there. Yeah, there you go. And there's a crash. <laughs> not quite, not quite. All right. Okay, so why did we crash? Hmm. Oh, I guess because the there's no DOM node in this particular case. So and DOM node and yeah. So I don't I don't think this is perfect. I think there's still other cases we need to handle here. But I think this is a good start. Um, this code can definitely be better. So, um, yeah, we, we don't handle like, um, like if you have like many things that aren't text, but like many children of something, and then you select all those children, like three images or something like that in a row, I think stuff like that, we need to investigate how to do. But let's say that this is good enough for this moment to to um, to get us to where we need to be. I'll put a fix me here. Fix me. Um, make sure this works with um, non with uh, consecutive non-text children of things. Yeah. Okay, so let's just um, fix those up into this fella. Okay, there we go. And I think we should be good here. Um, so this has been a bit of a bit of a journey around selection related things, but in the end, it is working nicely. Graphical Unix, can I copy that and paste it here? Yes, I can. So we've done a bunch of things, uh, except one thing that I am going to do now, which is to actually delete layout range. I did forget about that one. So let's take care of that right away. Git RM layout position H CPP 
range was not its own thing. Sure. Nuke it. There we go. Layout range. Goodbye and goodbye. <laughs> See that it still builds, but I think it will. That would be pretty awesome. The web. Move now unused layout range and layout position um, classes. Sweet. All right. So what have we done? We have, well, we've added copy and select all to the menu here in Ladybird. Very nice. Um, we have made it so that, wait, select all. Yeah, when we resize, then it doesn't destroy the selection. So the selection now stays in resize, which is awesome. Um, that's something that's been bugging me forever. <laughs> so I'm glad, glad we got that working. Um, got rid of layout position and layout range. Those concepts are gone. We now talk to the DOM selection. And we also fixed it up so that um, we have this sort of variant of the range stringifier to, to extract only the visible text. That thing is probably going to need more work, especially if we want to start supporting things like um, rich text selection uh, or rich text copy so that like if I were to copy this, um, then I could paste it into a like a word processor and it would retain the style, like the, um, the font sizes and, and font weights and, and things like that. Uh, in order to do stuff like that, it's going to need to become more sophisticated, obviously, because we need to retain more of the style information in the thing that we copy out. But today, just omitting, since we're only doing plain text copy right now, um, just omitting the non-visible content, I think that was a good enough thing. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely very happy with this for the day. Uh, so let's uh let's end the video here <laughs> uh if you made it this far thank you so much for watching for hanging out i uh, hope that you saw something interesting here today and uh i'm certainly happy to be working on ladybird and um thank you for hanging out i will see you all next time bye